Okay, so I so far do not see anybody from the public um, except for Laura, an important person from the public. Laura, did you just come in to tune in today? I know you're gonna be with us on October 1st to present um, the project, but today, are you just tuning in? Just for fun, Carmen, just for the fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Laura, thank you. Yeah, I see you're on your treadmill. Excellent. <laughs> All right. I want to move agenda item number four up to the next agenda item, and that is um, uh, since we don't have public comments, but we have Spencer Gacy Bates here as a new member. Let's all go around. Let's introduce ourselves. Um, and I will start and I'll call on you to join in. So Spencer, I'm Carmen Juno. I've been uh, on the housing partnership since early 2019. Um, I've been the chair for about two years. I was formerly, um, I became very interested in housing when I worked at the VA with homeless vets and um, did a lot of housing searches and realized what, um, you know, numerous of the obstacles were. And I wanted to transfer that to something useful after I retired. All right, that's it. So um, let's see, Gordon. Hi, uh, so I'm Gordon. Uh, I've been on the uh, partnership uh, going back uh, maybe 12 years now. I kind of lost track of how many years it's been. Uh, I've been uh, chair two different distinct terms uh, through the years uh, and most recently uh, vice chair just coming off of that. And uh, I'm an attorney, I work for legal aid, I work for community legal aid. Um, I'm primarily based out of the Springfield office, but our program covers all of central and Western Massachusetts. And I just wanna add, um, especially for you, Spencer, that I am a, um, I'm a retired social worker and I'm also a homeowner in Florence. And I think Gordon's a homeowner in Leeds, right? Leeds, yeah. Okay, all right. Um, Edgar. Hi, uh, I'm Edgar Lucancel. A lot of people um, call me Edgar. Um, either is fine. And uh, I grew up here in Northampton. Um, I'm a renter in Florence. Um, and uh, I grew up in public housing here in Northampton. Um, and I actually serve on the uh, Board of Commissioners of the Housing Authority as well. Um, I've been doing um, housing related stuff since I was 19 years old uh, when I um, served on the board of uh, Valley CDC um, in the early 90s. Um, and ever since then I've done one thing or another. Um, uh, I am actually a, a Spanish interpreter, um, and um, I also work at Smith College as an event coordinator. Oh, oh and, I, and I've been on the partnership uh, probably about seven or eight years, six, seven, eight years, I forget. <laughs> Great. Thank you. Thank you, Edgar. Um, Hannah? Hi, Spencer. My name is Hannah. I'm a renter in Florence, uh, and I work as a board game designer. <laughs> and I, I've been on the partnership for since 2020. Um, Melissa? There we go. Uh, hi, Spencer and everyone. Um, so I've only been on the partnership for what? three, four months now, um, but I am a member of the planning board. I'm a Northampton native, born and bred, uh, Cooley Dickinson Hospital, Hamp High. Um, and I've been in construction uh, for my entire career over 30 years now in everything from just all variations of construction. Um, so I'm here to help in any way that you guys see fit. Thank you. Bev? Hi, my name is Beverly Bates. Please call me Bev. Um, 
I uh, I don't know how long I've been on. I'm guessing it's a little over a year. Um, I live in Florence. I'm a homeowner. Um, I have moved around a fair amount. Western Mass is where I was born and raised. Lived in Williamsburg for a bunch of years and then started traveling for work. Uh, and I am now back because I'm retired. Um, most of my work uh, was with the community builders. Some may know them. Uh, they were a partner in the redevelopment of Village Hill. Um, and I did a whole bunch of stuff for them. I started out as a project manager working in uh, the north end of Springfield. I did some work up in Northampton. I worked throughout Western Mass. And then I, as I said, moved around a fair amount. I was with them for 40 years before I retired. So I won't bore mm -hmm. you with various chapters of those 40 years. Uh, when I left, I was living and working in the, in Boston and I was hitting the uh, real estate development group, uh, which meant uh, overseeing the work of oh, 60 some odd people working throughout the Northeast, Midwest and uh, parts to the South. So in any event, housing has been my life literally for um many years. Um, and uh, as someone else said, uh, retirement leaves you saying, wow, what can I do? What can I do next? What can I do to give back and share some of what I've learned over the years? And uh, being involved with partnership is, is, is one way I'm trying to do that. I'm looking for others because I have lots of time, I find. And uh, so I'm also on the Community Preservation Committee. Um, and uh, that's all. Thanks. Hey, thanks, Beth. S Spencer. Well, my name is Spencer Gazy Bates. I'm a, a, a resident of Northampton. I, uh, uh, my wife is a born and bred Northampton person. And the only reason why we live in Northampton is uh, thanks to the cha uh, denser zoning laws that got passed. We now live in what uh, used to be my in-laws yard uh, in Northampton. Oh. Um, I'm a, a pra I'm a, an attorney. I do um, taxes because I hate myself, but estate and mainly elder law, um, which is re really what got me in interested in the housing side of things. Because in my practice, I see lots of elderly people with lots of housing issues, and whether that's not just nursing homes, but just you know, what do we do with the the elderly sort of thing and so I'm here to help and 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 Hannah I'm an avid board game player so I'm going to have to hit you up for those at some point but uh yeah I'm just here to try to help out as I as I can thanks Spencer and before I get to you Ace just I just want to make sure people know that Spencer is an official uh member of the of the housing partnership now he's he's not just a member of the public, he is here with us. Thank you very much, Spencer. Ace, could you introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Ace, they, them. I've been a member of the Housing Partnership since July of 2020, so just over three years now. I live in Northampton, Ward 3. I am a homeowner and landlord. Uh, formerly, I taught computer science up at Mount Holyoke College, but I'm in the process of retraining as an electrician, uh, so that's fun and exciting. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much, Ace. It's nice to see you. Um, Laura. Uh, me? <laughs> yes. Yes. You okay. Want to introduce yourself. For, sure. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think Spencer has met you, but yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe not. You can't say he has, but um, <laughs> so uh, I am not a member of the housing partnership, although I used to be for about five years in the long distant past. Um, I'm the real estate development director for Valley Community Development Corporation, and uh, we have three projects underway in Northampton, so I often just try to come and listen in. That's why I'm here tonight. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Laura. Okay, so... On to the dry part of the agenda, approval of the July 3rd minutes. Does anybody have a motion to approve? I'll move to adopt them. Anybody second? Okay. 
Edgar, yes? Okay. So, um, yeah, we need a voice vote. So, um, Gordon, yes. Edgar, yes. Ace? Yes. Hannah? Yes. Bev? Uh, Melissa? Yes. And um, did I miss anybody besides me? No. All right. We have a group. I have to um, turn up the volume on this, and that's going to be very challenging for me. There. Okay. Um, so, Edgar, you are on on an update on Northampton Housing Authority and your idea too that people it would might be helpful for people to tune in, um, and my idea that we could take turns. Go ahead. Sure. So, <laughs> I've been uh, serving on the Housing Authority Board now for. Uh, well, gosh, about a year and a half. Um, I, yeah, about a year and a half. Um, and um, uh, things have gotten uh, quite uh, difficult lately in terms of um, difference of opinions and uh, difference of opinions regarding policies. And um, I tend to bring a lot of stuff up and ask a lot of questions and um that uh in uh, many times has has caused a lot of um a lot of contention a lot of um uh pushback um i think people feel um more like uh um people tend to take things a little uh, uh too personal um and so we've we've had some interpersonal relationship um, issues that we're working on. Um, uh, um, currently looking at uh, taking some training as the board, so different trainings, um, and uh, looking to move forward um, in, in sort of a, a more positive way uh, of communicating and of um, sharing ideas and, um, and working on our differences. So it's been very challenging, but I have noticed that um, the more uh, pe people that show up, the smoother the the meetings tend to be. I think um, uh, more participation from the community at large really does make a difference on that board, um, and public input um, makes a difference. Um, uh, so yeah, so I would encourage you folks, uh, if you can, uh, attend those meetings. That would be um, awesome. Uh, we meet every third Monday of uh, each month from 5.30 to 7. And um, I can figure out uh, what the link is and then share it with, uh, with the group um, at some point, um, either by email or I'm not sure. I, I wish I was um savvy enough to kind of drop that um that uh, link right here on the group chat but I, I i can um figure out and then send an email out to folks um if folks ever want to uh, come and check in and um even just observe and um and uh, and just be there um uh, just like laura's here today um um hanging out with us um that really does have a, a, an impact. And, and um, so again, I encourage folks to, if you can, uh, uh, drop by sometime. So I think what you indicated to Keith and I when we planned this meeting was that um, having participation from the community, even just in the observation status, right? We don't have to know what we're talking about or do anything, but just be an observer. Um, equals a more civil civil discussion in the Northampton Housing Authority monthly meetings, right? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Keep, keep yeah. you, your hand. 
Yeah, Edgardo, uh, later after, excuse me, later after the meeting, you can just email me the information and I'll make sure it's in the minutes and it goes with to everyone. Okay, that's perfect. Thank you. Yeah, that'd be really good. Um, Edgardo, I really appreciate that you're that you're sharing this with us. It's a, I mean, I do not envy the people who like you who need to attend this meeting. I've read some of the minutes. Earlier today, I went back to take a look at more recent minutes. I mean, I realize the August minutes haven't been approved yet, but I don't see that anything's been posted for a while. I might be looking in the wrong place, but I, I know that things are very dismissive and difficult. And if we can help make a difference by being an observer and bringing that knowledge back to this meeting. Um, that's a way to advocate for affordable housing and tenants. And most of the people in Northampton housing, as I'm sure you know, Spencer, are, are senior citizens and some of them are disabled you know, younger people. So it's uh, it encompasses a certain percentage of the population here. I should also share with Spencer, he might know already, um, but um, uh, I am, uh, I'm actually, how I am a member of the Housing Authority Board is um, I, I represent the Housing Partnership on that board. Um, and that came via the uh, recent legislation uh, that was passed to add more tenant participation uh, uh, for the Housing Authority Board and um, also included uh, having a representative from the Housing Partnership sit on that board. Um, and so uh, I bring the perspective and the experiences from the work, uh, the awesome work that we've done on this board, but also uh, lived experience as a tenant, as a former tenant, um, and also former um, a president of a tenant association in uh, one of the properties. Uh, where I lived. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I have, you know, uh, certain perspectives um, that um, that are valuable uh, to how how the um, housing authority uh, runs, um, or at least in my mind it is. <laughs> and um, yeah, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, so that's how I just wanted to sort of uh, explain that. Um, because uh, it's, uh, I believe, uh, three three residents, uh, one representative from the housing authority, and um, and then uh, three other members from the public. One of which is appointed by the governor. Okay, thank you, Edgar. So let's move on on agenda item six. Keep presentation on Evergreen Road and the need for a letter of support. Uh, uh, Carmen, Edgar had his hand up for a second. Oh, Edgar, you did? Go ahead. Oh, no, I just wanted to point out that Beth had uh, her hand up. Oh, Beth, okay, go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. Um, well, I don't want to delay the conversation if you're anxious to move forward with the agenda. I get that, but... Um, I guess I was wondering whether Edgardo would be comfortable um, not getting into any of the drama, but maybe uh, naming what you consider to be, you know, two or three of the top challenging issues. Uh, is it about money? Is it about new projects? What, you know, what tends to stir the pot? Yeah, let's definitely go back. I don't mean to hurry the agenda. We have plenty of time. Okay. So Edgar, do you want to respond to that? Uh, yeah, um, so um, it's not usually about um, um, uh, fiscal stuff or uh, money or uh, financial uh, things. It's really more about um, the type of service uh, that we provide to residents. Um, and, you know, again, me having come from that lived experience, um, I tend to voice a lot of concerns that uh, that residents bring up. And I think oftentimes um, management uh, 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 takes that uh, more on a defensive side rather than 
as a, you know, either adding valuable input or asking questions just simply out of really not understanding uh, the process um, of how uh, things have been uh, operating there uh, for a long time. And so there's a certain type of resistance um, when things are brought up. Um, and so we just need to, I think, need to find a way to um, uh, work on those issues uh, without uh, getting uh, defensive. And I must admit that I uh, have done that myself uh, in some of the interactions uh, that happen. Um, not necessarily taking it personally, but really just um, um, getting worked up um, over our differences and um, just not, and, and that producing uh, just not the the most ideal decorum for a board and how a board is, you know, should operate. So um, I must admit that at times I've been, you know, part of the problem, so. Uh, thank you for sharing that. Um, mm. When people get uh, angry or mm -hmm. overly emotional when someone raises a problem, it doesn't tend to uh, encourage other people to do the same. Yeah, thanks. I think, Edgar, now that I'm thinking about it, a few months ago, I was able to read through some of the minutes of the Housing Authority that were actually as recent as, I don't know, maybe February, March, and April, but somehow tonight I couldn't find it. Keith, I don't know, maybe if you could send information on how to get to some of the minutes, but they're really interesting. And I think that you, Edgar, speak well to the nuance of human behavior that, you know, when you feel like there's nobody listening and there's a wall, it's very hard to not get sort of flamed up, you know what I mean? And I, and I saw that clearly when I was reading some of the minutes of the early spring, late winter of this past year. Yeah. All right, any other questions for Edgar? Can we move on? Okay, as usual, thank you for helping me see who, who has hands raised. All right, Keith Evergreen Road, please, letter of support. Yeah, so um, coming to you to ask, uh, so I'm the applicant um, to request money for the CPA for uh, to, to kind of help develop uh, affordable housing. So uh, city has four parcels that we're moving forward. This is just one of them. And it's on Evergreen Road in Leeds, around about uh, number 48 lead on Evergreen Road. It's currently a very small parcel. Um, I mean, it's very tiny, um, but it has enough frontage for uh, a single family or a duplex. And uh, the sewer line is short by 125 feet. So we're just going, we're just asking money from the CPA to extend the sewer line 125 feet. And uh, so right now my budget is about $50,000. I might have to just adjust that. So the application might be for 60, um, but we are, um, yeah, minimum, it's gonna be one or two um, units and minimum one of them has to be affordable. So. If it's two units, it's either going to be one affordable or two. Um, we don't have a developer yet. Um, this parcel used to be a um, a water tower, uh, so there was some underground stuff there. But um, we've done due, dil, due diligence, and we believe once we kind of get the sewer line um, tied in, then we can uh, sell it uh, to an affordable housing developer. Um, so that application is due within the week, um, I believe. Um, and so um, if we get the money, then uh, this round for the fall, then hopefully we would uh, go to bid for the construction and by spring or summer, we would have completion. Um, that's so about... the application. So the application for this part of the project it doesn't have a developer yet, but it would be an application for CPA funds. Right. And then we would use that money. We, the city, would use that money to install the sewer 
And then yeah. obviously the, the housing developer would have a nice clean parcel to work with. And so the application would be on behalf and supporting the city of Northampton for these funds? Correct. So are there any comments? Does anybody oppose this affordable housing development? <clears throat> All right, so it seems like a no-brainer. I mean, I will send you, Keith, a letter on behalf of the Housing Partnership, all right? Um, and I know this round of CPA funding is coming up very soon, right? So you need the letter by, like, by the end of this week, I'll get it to you. Okay, and do we want to just do a vote, um, get a vote on that? Well, does anybody oppose? Okay. Sounds good. Thank you. We agree. Yeah. All right. Next on the agenda, discuss housing partnership priorities. So we broke this down into two sort of general categories. One is the municipal affording uh, affordable housing trust fund, and the other is advocacy, uh, which is even more generic. We were, you know, we want to, right, help the partnership um, identify and work towards goals. I wanted to say something about the Housing Trust Fund. So that's something that's been uh, researched for the last essentially couple of years, but more pertinently over the last six months or so by a committee that includes Edgar, Edgar Gwen who is currently on leave because she's doing an internship in Central America. Uh, Hannah, right? The three of you, right? Hannah, is that right? Yes, I forgot to mention that actually uh, Gwen uh, would be a little late today, but she is checking in with us. Um, she's gonna try to attend these uh, meetings uh, as much as possible, even while she's away. Okay. So, and I, I think also, and Beth has expressed interest too, which I just wanted to add. Yeah, that would be great. I want to say a couple, make a couple of statements and then open this up for discussion. So in preparation for today's meeting. Um, so Spencer, a, a, municipal, a municipal affordable housing trust fund is actually Northampton used to have one. It's dormant. It has still has about $1,500 in it. And many communities have started or revived theirs in an uh, because it's a, a more nimble way of funding certain, you know, housing projects. CPA has a twice a year funding cycle, so spring and fall. Um, we've had, and the other thing for you to know is we've had some, you know, kind of, uh, well, we're not interested in reviving this from the city officials, right? No interest in that. So two things I want to say. One is, I was in touch with Sarah LaValle, who's, I think Keith is your counterpart. She's the staff liaison to um, the CPA. And Bev, you probably know this as well. She said that only 25% on average, only 25% of what could be, could have gone to housing, has gone to housing over the years of the CPA funding and uh, funding cycles. So um, we are- Carmen? Yeah. Yes. It's it's, uh, it's not 25% that could go to, it's 25% can go to, and that's about the average. So uh, it, it's not, we're giving one quarter of the total money away that could go to housing. It's of the total, one quarter does go to housing. Okay. 10% has to go to each category, right, Keith? 10% has to go to each different category. And then we have the 25%. Anyway, it's been less than housing. Uh, it's been less than um, than we could get for housing. I don't know exactly why that is. Laura's here, I'm glad she's tuning in. Um, the second thing I wanna say is that there's a training coming up on September 21st. I don't know if I resent the link to everybody, it's free. And 
there are three parts to it. And from 12 to one o'clock on Thursday, September 21st, Sierra, I can't remember her last name, from Southampton is going to talk about how Southampton gave rise to a, an affordable housing trust fund and what that has done. So she's gonna hopefully talk in very practical terms about that. So I wanted to propose that some of us, this includes me, I'm already registered, um, watch that. And also that Edgar, you and the, um, and the subcommittee come back in October and then we really gather our thoughts there in terms of next steps that we want to propose. So oh, those are my thoughts. I open it up to discussion. Hannah. Uh, I think that's great. I feel like I will try to go to that training. I think that's going to be really good for like crystallizing some of the just ideas and learning for me. And that also seems like a good timeline to just really get things going in October based on uh, what's learned in that training. So do you did I resend the link or do you have the link so you can register? I think I do have the link. I appreciate the reminder though, because I forgot about it. So I will sign up. All right. Beth? Yeah, um, I signed up too. And I and I have been given this a, a, a bit of thought uh, um, uh, in the last you know few weeks. Um, I guess... <laughs> I feel as though we have to cut through is the only word I can use um, what seems to be resistance or ambivalence um, on the part of the mayor and on the part of the planning director, as you know, they shared at the meeting they attended. Um, and it, in my recollection, it was born of a, a view that the, all of the funding needs of those who've come forward to ask for funding have in fact been met through, you know, CPA or home or block grant or whatever. Um, and perhaps some skepticism about the strategy of employing a transfer tax to raise additional capital. And so, yeah, I, I, I'm going to the training and I think we should have a discussion, but it feels to me as though we've had lots of discussion about the wisdom of doing it, but I feel I feel as though there's some, um, what feels to me, roadblocks ahead that we should figure out how to, how to sort, either move them or acknowledge that they're there and think about something else. The other thing, I, I, I went back and did some more reading about the, the early days of uh, uh, municipal trust fund activity. And, um, you know, it, it came to be around the same time that CPA did. And it was imagined to be a vehicle for managing CPA monies. And to the extent that there is another vehicle for doing that here in Northampton, that seems quite happy with its ownership of those funds. Um, you know, it, it's hard to imagine uh, how we uh, raise additional capital beyond having a good chunk of the CPA money. So I just put, I hate to be a naysayer, but I think those are two very fundamental issues that we got to explore. And I, I'm guessing when we go to the training, they're going to talk about the importance of support from uh, the chief executive of the city, the city councilor, council, and coherence around how uh, existing funding is allocated. Um, so that's my speech. Thank you very much. Yep. Other comments? I agree with totally with what you said, Bev, that, and Hannah too, that we need to crystallize our knowledge we need to get our act together in terms of um, uh, a better kind of, not such a kind of, a, a kind of vacuous or kind of dissembled, you know, thought process. We need to go forth from this training. And I think Laura, 
being at our October meeting to present, um, I think it's Laurel Street, I believe, um, the Laurel Street project. Um, I think there are some questions about funding that we can ask her um, during that presentation that we can perhaps um, bring from the training and other people can bring from their knowledge base anyway. And then go forth from that with some uh, ideas, plans, and invitations. And if they don't work, then I think that we need to put it to rest too and um, expand to other things. I totally agree with that. Okay, looks like everybody's in agreement or thinking about it. Um, and if you need the link to the training, let me know. Just send me an email. I think I send it out once or twice. I'm not going to, uh, you know, flood your email with more of these same links. All right. Um, the next part of the Housing Partnership Priorities is advocacy. Um, I think that in some ways, the next Agenda item, discuss the next steps for the MEI light launch meeting, sort of fits into this, but advocacy. What do we want to do? What is our role? How can we advocate? For example, a question I have is, is attending the Northampton Housing Authority meetings on a regular basis with just one of us, maybe even on a rotating basis? I mean, to me, that is advocacy. That is an observer coming in and saying, I'm Carmen Juno from the Housing Partnership, I'm just here to watch, et cetera. But, you know, we write letters of support for different projects. Sometimes we'll get on a community meeting. I know people here have been on city council meetings, et cetera, to, and CPA meetings as well, more than I have to advocate for certain projects. Um, so I open that up and other any other thoughts you might have. Melissa. I would love to add in there that um, we love to see everybody as uh, at the planning board meetings as well. Um, I think it makes a huge difference. Um, I know there was um, a couple of folks, we had, a little, we had some technical difficulties in our last meeting, but there's a couple of folks there for the Evergreen Road project. Um, and, uh, you know, just most of the time we're just uh, more often than not getting the folks that don't want something to happen. Mm -hmm. So just having that positive voice um, uh, is, is super helpful. Um, and, uh, and just while I have the floor here for a second, the, the last meeting that we had two and a half weeks ago was a, a we had a Evergreen Road potential for two units, Cook Ave, four units, crafts have 30 units. Um, it was good night for affordable housing and i um, looking forward to more of those. That's all I got. And so actually I, I saw um, later at the Moose Lodge, you know, that entrance to Fitzgerald Lake um, that there was a public notice and I went to look at it and it had already passed the week before and it was the planning department. So I'm not sure if we get regular notices, but I think we should. Everybody on the housing partnership about planning department, maybe, I don't know if we can be forwarded the planning department agenda that would have the date and the agenda items. I don't know exactly how to do that, but I realized that I had totally missed that and was missing some, some things that are going on in the planning department. So I appreciate picking up. That, that's a Great point. And I, I would be happy to, and I'm sure, you know, Keith's got his hand up, but um, yeah, if uh, I would love to be a part of making sure that everybody on this partnership sees those agendas, uh, because it's great to have everybody there for representation. And when you, um, when you had that meeting that um, talked about these three different projects, um, so people from Evergreen Road, a couple of people were there in objection. What was the tenor of overall of support or non-support for the other projects? Uh, for the other projects, um, Cook, you know, it's it's interesting because um, um, 
you know, overall on the board, I think, but I think all three of those were approved unanimously. Um, and usually there's a couple of folks there, like there was a, a person for Cook Avenue that uh, talked a lot about invasive species and uh, not weed. And, and although that, that, you know, was kind of not particularly relevant to what we were able in our in our jurisdiction to to talk to vote on but um there was no opposition and Laura's right there now there's no opposition to cook off um uh we and that had been um many meetings in I know that I don't know how many but probably three four five meetings in with the public so they're getting a lot of opportunity to uh get their get their um folks that they have um any particular issues um to be heard and have those addressed by our partners that are, are working to develop these sites. Um, there was a, a you know, a something about uh, wetlands and a, and a stream that people were concerned that we make sure that we, um, you know, is taken care of. And again, Keith can and speak to that. Um, Crafts Avenue also, um, a couple of meetings have been held now. And, um, you know, there was a couple of uh, letters in, um, we get letters um, submitted to us from the public. And there was a couple of um, folks like, um, you know, say provisions, um, the, the shop across the street, just concerned mm -hmm. about how this project might affect their business place. Uh, and then there was also a gentleman there from the Central Architecture District who um, had some comments about how it looked. Um, but good good feedback. And in, in general, the there wasn't uh, any, uh, um, there wasn't a lot of uh, opposition in those particular projects. But we have been, we have been in that position before where um, there's a lot of folks there that are angry and, uh, you know, and yeah. we're, we're trying to make something happen. So, but those yeah. three projects uh, were uh, pretty easily accepted. I feel like in terms of advocacy, it's one thing for us to say here, Oh yeah, well let's all try to attend planning board meetings and Northampton Housing Authority now. But I think it would be way more effective if we actually had a rotating list of people of one person each time who was willing to do it, who could, who would be accountable to us, to us the housing partnership, to actually be there and 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 would then report back. And I wonder if people would be open to signing up month by month, definitely for the planning board. And I would say at least, you know, as much as we can for our Hampton Housing Authority. And then one of our report backs would be reporting back on that particular meeting, just briefly. But it provides some accountability and some real substance, I think, for the person from our side who is attending those meetings. What do our people, would people be willing to sign up like that? Um, or we could try signing up for the planning board and then see how that goes. And then those of us who can, can go to the housing authority. I'm not sure. Does anybody have any comments? All right. Deb? <laughs> Spencer had his hand up for a while. Spencer? Oh, I had my, <clears throat> excuse me, hand up for a, a, a different thing I wanted to bring up, but I know Laura <laughs> had her hand up. I thought. Oh, okay. All right, well, let's go back to the hands and then people can think about this. Laura, do you want to start? I would love to. Um, I would be happy to be included in, even though I'm not a member, I'd be very happy to be assigned, especially to go to the Northampton Housing uh, Authority. I've tried before to locate information about their meetings and when they are and how to get to them. And it has been a black box. So I would be eager to do that. Um, with the planning boards, I think if Keith can, you know, signal the partnership when there's a housing item, it might be useful because they meet twice a month. Our meeting went like four hours. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it's a big ask and, and it's a lot of stuff that doesn't really relate to the work of the housing partnership. So mm -hmm. it might 
I, we just recommend so people don't get burned out. A um, little more targeted there. That's a um, a good point. We um, uh, and we're also um, mostly in person. Um, the virtual world um, can only chat. So chats are good, and they're all written, writ, read, read into the minutes mm -hmm. and read out loud in our meeting. But having somebody that's there in person for a particular um, hearing is uh, uh, more poignant. Mm -hmm. So, and Melissa, also, when when there is um, a portion of the planning board that's going to be devoted to to a project, housing project, um, somebody could tune in for that and not necessarily stay for the whole thing, obviously. Oh, yeah, certainly. Right? I, yeah, uh, yes, for sure. Okay. But yeah, our last one went almost till midnight, so that is a very big ask. Right, that's a very big ask. So I think that let's... Let's start planning this. So I think what we're developing is a little bit of a, sort of like a watchdog philosophy, right? We're going to try to tune into Northampton Housing Authority as an interested observer. Um, I would like to do that. I agree, Laura, that it is, um, a, it is an opaque, it is opaque to try to get any information and to um, try to figure out what's going on. So we can tune in. So with Gardo, you're going to send people the link for the housing authority, right? And I, I will volunteer to be this month's um, person. And it's once a month, right, Edgar? Uh, yeah, once a month uh, on, on the third Monday of each month, for the most part, sometimes because of holidays, it might change. Yeah. But um I will also um, look into, and I'm going to send the link to uh, Keith, and Keith will send it out. Um, but um, I will also look into information about how to, you know, for for anyone yeah. uh, from the public to tune in because I get it because I get a monthly package from the uh, chair. Uh, right. But uh, I've never tried to just, you know, log in. Like, I've never really looked at how to log in or anything like that. Um, but I did find the link and I'm going to send it to Keith now. Okay, sounds good. So I'll attend this month. I will report back to this um, committee in October. And you, Edgar, will research how does the general public get information so you can familiarize yourself with that. And the planning board. When is the next planning board, Melissa? And do you know if it includes housing projects? I'm trying to find my unmute button there. Yeah, I'm looking at it uh, right now, and it does not. It's um, it's this Thursday, and um, I as a quick, it's I don't see anything okay. that is uh, affordable housing. Okay, so you'll keep us posted, and um, we will try to assign somebody who's a volunteer to be accountable and to consolidate the thoughts of the housing partnership when we have housing project. Okay. Sounds good. So any other housing partnership priorities right now, Bev? Well, um, Keith had his hand up before me, but, um, Keith? Bev? <laughs> oh, go ahead, Bev. I'll, I'll, I'll be I just want to, I've been listening to the whole conversation about planning board in, in addition to everything else people said, you know, it, it takes a long time, as everybody knows, for a housing development to get permitted and funded and blah, blah, blah. So it's not like a mystery when things are going to be coming down the pike. But still, if we had a way to know what the new projects are, other than reading in the paper or gossip or if you're on the CPA board, blah, blah, blah. Um, it, we could kind of track them and understand what the dynamics are, what the uh, butter concerns are. Um, and then if somebody were going to show up at a planning board meeting or any other meeting, um, you sort of have a sense of the flow and the issues and could not just say, I'm in support of affordable housing, but rather say, I'm in support of this project because. Yes. And I don't know how we do that. I don't know if Keith can be some sort of a, you know, provider of updates about new housing initiatives. 
Um, but I defer to him on that. Thanks, Beth. Keith? Yeah, um, so I was just going to say that you can always um, individually uh, subscribe to the planning board or the zoning board or the housing partnership, and you get the agenda right away. Um, I do that, um, and sometimes I have the mind, you know, if there's something, I try to forward it, but sometimes they don't check it uh, just because um, things are busy, and if it's not related to what I'm doing, I, I tend to uh, disregard um, so, uh, yeah, I think if, if there want, if you want to, and to Bev's point, you know, like, uh, anytime someone's coming to the CPC, uh, for the most part, they've, all, they've come to us too. So they reach out to me, things like that. Um, but, um, you know, some of these projects like, uh, Crafts Avenue or, um, uh, Crooked Avenue, there's already been, um, either the developer or the city has kind of done some neighborhood meetings or some sort of design work. And sometimes I guess that has not included the housing partnership. So there might be an opportunity there to uh, bring in the housing or invite the housing partnership to some of those meetings um, uh, kind of before they ask for money or actually go to the planning board. So, Other comments? I think I think this committee has a need to know these things. I think I can't, you know, I can't see a notice on a tree saying notice of public thingy and say, wow, I really missed that. And I'm the chair of the housing partnership. So I think that between you, Melissa and Keith, and you know, if we could be notified of relevant meetings, that would be super. And I think Hannah to go back to use your term to crystallize our knowledge and have a person there who really can see the whole picture. I'd love to see our committee move in the direction of being more watchful and more um, uh, kind of assertive around these advocacy issues. Any Spencer has his hand up. Spencer? Oh, well, I I, I just put it up so I wouldn't forget to bring my thing up, but it's on a totally different advocacy note. So I, I'll I'll lower it until you're all ready or blab on something else. I think we might be ready. Yes. You have the floor. Oh, okay. Well, one thing that um, ironically came up being an elder law attorney um, that I noticed that I think that we might want to at least and I'm happy to, since I'm bringing it up, lead the charge, but um, is that the Biden administration has recently indicated that they're willing, the willingness to use Medicaid funds to support housing uh, and housing transitions. Um, and as a major, I mean, that's huge in terms of a funding yeah. standpoint. Uh -huh. uh, and I, Massachusetts, ironically, has one of the more robust Medicaid agencies in the country. And I also happen to know all the people who are in the legal department over there. Um, and so I think it might, it, this is all very in the nascent stages and things like that, but I think it might be worth reaching out to at least the Mass Health, which is our Medicaid agency, as a as a housing partnership group and indicate, you know, hey, we heard about this. Is there anything we could do to help get money? <laughs> you know, um, and whether that comes in, I mean, it would dovetail wonderfully with that whole trust if that comes to play, but it seems to be a very large pot of money um, that, and it's still in the, the phases of figuring things out, like I said, but Massachusetts has a pretty good rapport with the federal government, at least in terms of the Medicaid side of things. And so I think it might make sense to, you know, reach out to them. Would you would you be willing to keep your finger on the pulse there and report back to the committee? Yeah. And really, if it's I guess what one of the things I was hoping um, is that I'm happy to email the 
legal people, the legal team at Massachusetts's Medicaid office and say, you know, we're, we as a housing partnership are really interested in this idea. And is there anything we can do to help? Um, mm -hmm. And I'm happy to do that. And I can obviously report back, but it would seem to be if we can get in before everybody else does, it might be a good thing to do. Yeah, I would be interested in hearing more about this. I'm putting my CLA hat on because, of course, I, I live in a world of helping people remain housed um, through you know, stopping evictions or maybe people that need to transition. Elders particularly need maybe transition to something else. Um, and I'm just wondering, having just my initial reaction is, is this going to be like a benefit that could be accessed as part of the penalty of benefits that are available through Mass House? So it's on an individual recipients basis as opposed to money that would be used to develop. Yeah, and I think that that's a great question. I just pasted the ch one of the links to the articles talking about this in the chat. But Gordon, to answer your question, I don't think anybody actually knows uh, because I think some of it would be a benefit to Medicaid people, individuals, with, whether they're seniors, disabled, or the you know poor. In, in, individuals, but also there, there seems to be an indication of saying that this is also an affordability crisis and leveraging Medicaid's role in helping the unfortunate, you know, who, who have less means obtain services um, and acknowledging that housing is critical for health. And so it's it's really in the guidance stage. And the reason why I think we might get a pretty good traction with Massachusetts is the backwards way that it has to work is that the state has to request a program and a variance from the federal government who then approves it and gives the state money. And so if we can, you know, get some sympathetic ears on, which I, I think we can, knowing some of the newer mass health legal team and like hey let's not worry about jerk elder law attorneys like me getting all these people on nursing home benefits but let's do something mm -hmm. to help out society you know it could could be good great thank you i just opened the link and want to read this <laughs> yeah it's pretty interesting and it could be a kind of a big deal but if we can get some money it'd be great thank you spencer okay any other comments? And if not, I think we've sort of decided that the housing trust fund for the next few months and initiating some more assertive advocacy will be something that we all want to do. We have another agenda item I wanna move on. Does anybody else have any comments at this point? Anna? Sorry, Carmen, to slow things down. Um, I had a Quick clarifying question for Keith. Keith, you had mentioned at some point, like something that people could subscribe to for housing partnership updates or uh, housing authority updates. Where, like, where does the public find that link? Or did I misunderstand? Uh, not housing authority. So okay. all the boards and commissions. So so um, planning board, zoning board of appeals, housing partnership, disability commission anything like that. Um, I can send you the link, but it's, uh, if you just go to northamptonma.gov and then I'll send it to you. But um, it's kind of, there's like some really small buttons and <laughs> it looks like you have to sign up for an account, but you basically just put in your email address and that is it. I don't think you have to create a password, but I can put that in the chat. And then- Okay. Um, and just as like, uh, if there's any way to make that more obvious for members of the public, I, mean, I know that's probably a bigger discussion and involves like website stuff, but it sure. just seems to be this constant thing of like people asking me how to get involved and I don't always know or so, um, yeah. but thank you. Yep. I think that the Northampton Housing Authority um, information is opaque, but I would generalize that to the whole city of Northampton. It's it's really hard to go on the website and for me and find somebody something coherent that I'm looking for. All right. 
So can we move on? Any other questions, comments? Going, going, gone. All right, Keith, next steps on the MEI light launch. Yes, so it's been, uh, I guess we had a meeting last month or we skipped August. It's been so long. I don't really remember the last time I'll talk to you all. Um, but we did take a month off. Um, but in June, we had the CHAPA Municipal Engagement Initiative light launch program. And it was just really them helping us kind of facilitate a conversation about affordable housing, not about any particular project. Um, and hopefully it was piquing people's interest to get involved or to be advocates. Um, and the, the full program is, is them working more closely with us uh, and maybe even about a particular project. Um, but um, so just wondering if uh, from anyone who attended the meeting, um, if there's any interest in helping facilitate other conversations about housing um, or uh, if people just have thoughts about the meeting, uh, I, I guess we can start there. Anyone have any thoughts about the meeting, those that attended? Oh, I'll, I'll begin. Uh, oh, well, I saw Bev's hand. Go ahead, Bev. Um, I thought it was good. It was nice to see how many people showed up, relatively speaking. Uh, it was nice to see people in a venue other than this. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I think it did underscore for me the fact that, you know, people think about housing, particularly folks who are not, you know, sort of working in housing, um, through they think about it through the lens of their life and their life's reality. Um, so my recollection is, you know, some people were thinking a lot about how to preserve existing sort of naturally occurring affordable housing, uh, how to have access resources so that people can keep their homes up. Um, some concerns about the impact on neighborhoods of having infill development happening around uh, existing housing, but I, I, I can honestly tell you, I don't know what the venue is, if any, where the sort of larger issues associated with how much housing, what kind of housing, where, for whom, where, does, where do those conversations happen, if at all, presumably uh, through periodic planning conversations. Um, so my point is, I think I think encouraging more conversation would be great, especially if the end goal is to involve all of the people who either do this every day, like you do, Keith, or who have an interest, like we do, in a conversation that can result in something that feels more like a strategic plan than I've ever seen. Thank you, Beth. I was going to add a comment too. Um, I think that the the general goal of this training and the meeting was to have a grassroots effort to um, be, um, you know, sort of from the ground up. And my understanding was that the people who got on the list and signed in, email, etc., were going to be contacted to continue. But it was always kind of nebulous who was going to lead the continuation. That was very nebulous. So the CHAPA people came in, they did this training, they encouraged from the ground up, and there were a lot of people at the meeting, it was a lot of interest, and but now what? And I'm I'm not sure. And it's been three months, and I'm uh, some of that momentum may have been sort of lost. I don't know. That's my comment. Hey, Carmen. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think, uh, yes, I would agree with that sentiment. Um, momentum and very nebulous. Um, and, you know, one of the things that um, I did talk to them after the meeting, and we were looking at, you know, who's in the meeting and who's not in the meeting, who's 
being represented, who's not, you know, and there's a lot of homeowners in there. There's a lot of people, uh, um, it, you know, but there wasn't a lot of renters. There wasn't a lot of people of color. There wasn't a lot of uh, anyone that we know of that was in um, like an affordable housing unit. Um, so those voices are being lost. And to Bev's point about the lens that people are looking at it, they're looking at it as a single uh, family homeowner or something like that. Um, so, um, you know, how can we expand that conversation? And, um, and you know, part of the reason I didn't um, kind of take the next step is I wanted to kind of get some sounding board off of the partnership uh, and kind of see what was, um, what they thought the next steps would be. Or if there's anyone that was kind of wanting to volunteer um, to not necessarily lead, but to still take conversations. So, you know, one of the techniques that we 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 used is, you know, having a place for all comments and saying, okay, we're talking about affordable housing, and I'm listening to this conversation. And the comment maybe is not applicable, and we just kind of park it here. You know, we're, we're taking the notes and we're going to put your comment here, but we're we're kind of talking about this. Um, so just facilitating conversations. Um, as a as a as a uh, volunteer, but uh, I definitely don't want to uh, impose that on anyone if they're not willing willing to. Um, and then where that where that meeting could be, um, you know, downtown is uh, maybe less successful to some people, uh, but if there's other venues, um, and the the idea is not for the city me myself to be planning all that, but um, maybe it was more collaborative effort. So there's some things to be um, figured out before the next step. I just personally don't know where to go with that. And I, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to ask everybody um, uh, this question. Um, do, do you think if we were to be so bold as to sponsor um, several, um, not sure the word, right word is several, but um, community meetings open that have to be in a venue big enough in case a lot of people came, um, perhaps with a little more structure than that meeting had um, and maybe a little more outreach to accomplish what Keith was alluding to, which is some good representation from various parts of the community. Um, it is specifically as a conversation about housing to, to, to really drill down behind, beyond that word. Um, where, where should we be looking? What should we be thinking? Again, you know, infill in neighborhoods, the few places left that are buildable, um, to what extent is housing an important part of the downtown plan, um, et cetera. And, you know, if that's already happening in other venues, we don't want to do it. But if it's not happening, then that seems to me the right next steps. And then, you know, aggregate what you hear. And I don't know who it goes to, but at least it could give this group a sense of uh, some issues we want to start to add to the advocacy list. I mean, I would support that as staff, but also just in general, yeah. You'd be a good leader for that, Ben. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I really do defer to people who have worked in the grassroots in this community longer than I have, um, and certainly more recently. Um, nobody wants to spend time on stuff that's not gonna be satisfying. Um, we might know how satisfying it could be if we at least had another one, uh, see who shows up, et cetera. Um, uh, others think it's a good idea. To get does it is it getting in the way of what the staff do at the city or what the people folks at the planning department do 
I I don't know. Um, that I'll just add quickly one of the reasons yeah. that I'm happy that we get a kind of an update from Edgardo by the housing authority is we, I would love to have one of those meetings at like a housing authority building, you know, to get some of those clients or, or um, uh, people who live there um, and, and and maybe, you know, definitely try to steer away from conversations about the housing authority. But, you know, the fact that the renters, um, the fact that the others, the, they have the other lived experience uh, something we want. And um, yeah, that's... Keith, just to respond, I think that's a, a brilliant idea. And maybe that could become part of the uh, template for the approach. Take it on the road to different places um, where people convene anyways, or maybe, you know, where people might be encouraged to come that they otherwise wouldn't. And I keep coming back to this downtown issue because, um, you know, I have no clue what's in the second, third, fourth stories of all of those buildings up and down Main Street, uh, many of which sadly have vacant storefronts. But in most places, some of what's up there either today or yesterday was housing. And mm -hmm. so is there a conversation that happens, whether it's with the economic development folks or some other group about just Main Street in terms of the the the, the housing dynamics um, and maybe opportunities? And you got you know you could add other 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 places to go to have this conversation. Hannah, you had your hand up, and then Melissa. Uh, I mean, a lot of it's just sort of like nodding along enthusiastically. I feel like, yeah, that's it just makes so much sense to me. I feel like also doing a public forum meeting like this could sort of like hold us to account as the housing partnership, just like hearing what we have the projects we're working on, but who knows if these are even reflective of the wider community. I mean, I think that the broker fee ban we've seen really is, but also it's like mired in very slow legislation right now. So um, I, I, it's just, it's getting me fired up and I think it's great. I don't know what, I don't know what to say beyond, I think it's great. Like I, I wanna know what happens to make it happen. So I'm like, does that mean, doing a subcommittee where we talk in a subcommittee about actually how to have yeah. that first meeting. Um, so that's, that's a, mm -hmm. that is a comment and a question. Thank you, Melissa. I was just gonna uh, say to Beth's question, is it, you know, um, I think it's a valuable, I think there's a valuable slice of, um, of, um, of effort there that the community is asking for. I know that there's a, a perception um, that um, they're not being heard by the city, regardless of what the topic is and what yeah. side of that topic you're on. There's, um, I can, well, I can speak specifically to our experience on the um, planning board. By the time a hearing comes before us, it's typically a technical review and all of the I's have been dotted and all the T's have been crossed. And we go through and we look at everybody's responses. We look at all the letters that have been sent in. We look at all the drawings and it fits um, what our you know laws in the city require. So we approve it. And um, you know we have a lot of conversation about what we think about things, but there's the, the people that come to perhaps oppose something feel very unheard because it's been, all been laid out in front of us. All this work's been done for months and months, the hundred, you know, tens of thousands of dollars have been spent on design and it's good to go. Um, so, you know, I know that they would love an arena to get more involved with the broader picture of things, um, the planning, um, mm -hmm. having a voice in things. Um, it's uh, not an easy task mm -hmm. by any means, because people are very, Bev, I know you've been doing this for your whole life. 
pinned oftentimes to one side or the other. And a lot of times that conversation becomes less than fruitful. So you have to be very, there has to be somebody that, or a group of people that are very experienced in having an agenda and having points they want to get through and having people be heard, but not yet continuing to rehash over, you know, a handful of people's opinions, but I don't need to go any farther on that. I think it's a great idea. I think that your com both of your comments and Melissa, what you just said is really, really pertinent because yes, we could, for example, tonight form a subcommittee from the housing partnership to, to discuss next steps if there are at least two people interested. And Bev, you were totally qualified to be on that committee, even though you haven't been back in Northampton for that long. But then the question is, what is the point of inviting people to these discussions? Is there a point? You know, what will be, is this just to air thoughts and feelings about the city and affordable housing? Is there a way to funnel people into more advocacy? So I, I take your warning about, you know, or, or your, your words about heeding, you know, kind of, uh, you know, sort of people's mentality, certainly about the city does this and never listens to us to heart, you know, and I think it has to be thought out if there's going to be a subcommittee to take this on. So that's where I think we are next steps. You know, this was supposed to be a kind of from the ground up thing. There's no particular leader that's evolved. Is it going to be up to the partnership to do the next step? And if it is, it, it could be, I guess, but it, it would require a couple people to meet. Keith. Edgar has hand up first. Edgar. Oh, thank you. Um, Yes, I love this conversation because this is exactly this is exactly what we do. This is this is who we are. We're partners. We're partners of Northampton citizens. Um, and I think this meeting um, really, for me, is a lot about access, access to information, access to potential solutions. Um, so um, I, I've gone to a lot of community meetings and forums and stuff, and there's, the, there's always complaints, of course, because we're all human, we're not perfect, and we're trying to uh, get better as, um, as a community, as a city, but um, I think that, that this is like right up our alley in terms of like um, um, helping to identify the um the gaps that we have in the city and helping to identify the solutions um so i think creating a space uh, for folks to do more of that um and i'm sorry i couldn't make that last meeting um but there is a way i guess what i'm saying is to sort of steer that uh conversation to a solution driven uh conversation um and also you know to see you know who's interested in um, putting in some time and energy into figuring out some of those gaps and figuring those things out. Um, so, I mean, we we found out a lot. We covered a lot of stuff that came up from the community with our um, the report that we had a few years ago. Um, and so, I mean, bringing up some of those things uh, in, in a meeting like that and, and kind of trying to help people's spark people's imagination about how we can uh, tackle some of these issues in our city um, could be a great way for us to be, um, to have relevance uh, in our city and what in, in, in the work that we do here uh, on this on this committee. Gordon. Yeah, I just want to echo Carmen what you said that if if you if we're going to go down this road that we really have to have a sense of purpose of what we're going to what we're asking from the community. You know, I've been on I, I, as I said at the beginning of this meeting, I've been on the partnership for over a decade, and we've done a number of community meetings on different for different reasons. Mostly, they were focused around uh, resulting in a report. Going back about ten years, we did the strategic housing plan. 
um, which is a report that's out there. And we hired a consultant. We had a lot of community input in that. And then more recently, as Edgar just mentioned, we had the fair impediments to fair housing, which covered a lot of the same ground um, and a lot of recommendations. And we, we did do a lot of work within the community to identify what we call in these gaps. So I don't want to, we don't need to necessarily reinvent the wheel because we do have a lot of information that's already been collected from the community. And I don't want to, over, and part of the reason I'm raising this is because we don't want to overpromise um, that we bring a community together yes. that, uh, you know, what's next. Um, exactly. That's my worry right there. Edgar? I forgot to mention that, yes, of course, I'll volunteer to uh, be part of the subcommittee to uh, think about uh, about this. Does it make sense for there to be a small subcommittee to meet once before our next, um, well, hopefully before October, just to report back? And I mean, Gordon and or Bev, would you be willing to be on that? Yeah, I, I would be happy to. I'd be happy to be part of that just because I was kind of instigated the uh, thing and was at the meeting. <laughs> yes, you did. You you instigator you. <laughs> um, Hannah, would you just just like a one time thing before October? Hannah or Gordon or anybody else would you want to be on that? Yeah, I'm I'm interested. I'm uh, curious. I know uh, Melissa. I feel like you raised some good points too. Now I just feel like everybody's getting looped in. So, um, yeah. But, uh, yes, I'm interested. Okay, so we have four people so far to meet once before October and report back. Bev. Yeah, and I just you know what Gordon just said makes huge sense. Nobody wants to waste their time or redo work that has already been done. Um, and so maybe the number one agenda item for that meeting is, you know, what's what's the end game um, and how is it value add uh, relative to other things that are going on in the city and have gone on? Yeah. I mean, if, if you know, if we didn't feel the need for a subcommittee, we could, we could put this on the agenda again for October and think about it, discuss it, but I leave it up to you. Subcommittee wanted, meet once, report back. Sounds like that's what we're going to do. Okay. So Edgar, Hannah, Keith, and Bev. Sounds good. All right. We are running out of time and we're like pride ourselves in ending before seven. So I would like to close this part of the discussion if that's okay with everybody. And it looks like it is. Let's go on. Any other uh, any other business not anticipated? Okay, so so anyway, Keith, you're gonna get in touch with the subcommittee members, right? And you guys are gonna figure out a time to meet. Okay. No other business. All right. So our next order of business is adjourning the meeting. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, oh, by the way, before I say that, I think I I think this has been a great meeting. I like this bolder action plan of the housing partnership. Let's be bold. That's what I say. That's our new slogan. All right. So uh, motion to adjourn. So moved. <laughs>